I did fancy being a nurse quite from being young. I don't want to be doing this office work for the rest of my time. I'd like to do something else, and that's when I decided to go into nursing. So I thought, well, I'd like to be a nurse, so off I went. But at the end of the war, there wasn't much choice. You either joined the forces or um, land army or you went nursing. Well, we had um, a green cotton dress with loose collars and cuffs. And the collars and cuffs had to be changed daily. They were buttoned on. And a white cap, which you had to make up, up yourself. To differentiate between the years that you were in, he sewed a little piece of white tape on his sleeve. Um, one, two, and three. And then when you were qualified, when you were a staff nurse, you got your strings. And strings. And they were very uncomfortable. As a staff nurse, you could wear strings as well, and they were starched and they hurt. We lived in the nurse's home. All nurses in my day were unmarried and had to live in. We were like one big happy family. We had to be resident. That was, that was the ruling. You had to be resident for four years. Um, which was, and, and the, the Royal Infirmary is, is in, almost in the city centre of Liverpool. Strict rulings about you coming and going, you had to be in by no later than 11 o'clock at night. Um, so if you went to the cinema, <laughs> you often had to miss the last little bit while you legged it up London Road to get back before, before. The door was shut, you know, to let you in, yeah. Strict. I mean, we were locked in at 10 o'clock. I did learn to climb up drain pipes, but not till after I qualified. <laughs> this was the beauty of it. You know, if you'd had a bad day on the ward, you know, we'd all gather in somebody's room and have a real good moan about, you know, <laughs> sister so-and-so. <laughs> oh, dear me, yeah. yeah. Seeing the men blanche when I arrived, went to the cutthroat razor to, to shave them preoperatively. <laughs> when you were very junior, bedpans, <laughs> washing people. Disinfectant. You, one used to go off duty, have a bath, change your uniform, go out, and people say, there's a nurse somewhere here. And you think, I can't still smell of disinfectant. I've, I've changed. I've washed. <laughs> it was just post-war. You know, and there was no money. So there was not, not, not a lot of new stuff coming in at all. It's like being in the army, I suppose, isn't it? You know, people always say, you know, you miss your comrades. Yeah. All the staff had been military staff. The sisters had all been, in my day, had all been army sisters and it was run rather like a, a regiment, I suppose. Big, big wards of 32 beds, don't forget. And there were only two nurses on duty at night time on those wards. If you were on a single small ward of 20 beds, there was only one of you. That was a bit hair-raising, really. The sister's desk was in the, at the end of the ward where she could see everybody. We didn't have little rooms off like they have now. We had a big, long ward with the beds in rows and the sister could see everybody. She had an office, but she usually sat at the desk in the middle of the ward where she could observe. We didn't throw stuff away like they do now, you know. We, everything was recycled, you know. We, we had, you had your room. Um, Bandages sterilised and then you re-rolled them, washed them, stood them and so on. And, uh, you, you didn't throw syringes away, you re-boiled them. We, but there was nothing wasted and we were short of everything. Every few months we moved round to a different ward to get varied experience. Went to the eye hospital next and that was um, when I first encountered cockroaches. At night, you opened the kitchen door, put the light on, and there were whooshing sound. 
and it was cockroaches dashing for cover. He put on the light and stamped. <laughs> and they all had them, they all had them. And life was just hectic. Abs, you, you know, you learned to walk. It wasn't running because you weren't allowed to run. Ooh, we were in terrible trouble if you ran. Oh yes, you didn't have red and white flowers together. Oh, that's right. Yes, you weren't allowed those that meant to death. Somebody brought her these beautiful red and white carnations and I put them in a vase and put them in her room. And then the next morning she died. Um, I couldn't believe it, but I got told off for that by the ward sister. Who put these red and white flowers together? Um, so I owned up and she says, never do that. Never put red and white flowers together unless you put another colour in. Oh, and what's more, they also used to take the flowers out at night. They had this idea that they used up the oxygen. Visiting was very strict. Two visitors per bed. Nobody else. And the rest was shut outside the ward. But visiting time for the patients was only three days a week for Wednesday afternoon, one hour, Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon, one hour. And we had a night sister. Oh boy, you come round, you get all your patients quiet and asleep and she'd come and she'd pick up the poker and go ah! and wake them all up. And if they had, if they'd had amputations that had a cage over the bed, she'd yank back their clothes and wake them up and you think, it's taken me all an hour to get that poor man to sleep. Oh, she was a horror. <laughs> Yeah, yes, this is just how it was. I don't remember that they ever had five nurses round the bed, but still. Yes, we always had forceps. Didn't wear gloves, ever. We had forceps, um, which had to be boiled up, of course. There was always a steriliser in the middle of the ward. Now that's the bust of Florence Nightingale, isn't it? Ah, now an amusing thing about the chapel, lovely chapel actually. The strict ruling was that the men sat in the first two rows and behind them the females, you see. So I'm on duty this particular day and uh, this chaperoning everybody in. And this lady, very Welsh, comes in and she said, uh, I said, you know, I have to sit there. Why can't I go and sit with Di? I always go to chapel with Di when I'm home. I said, <laughs> I said well, I'm sorry, it's not allowed. For goodness sake! <laughs> because when they left the chapel, you had to make sure that the women were out of the chapel before the men were allowed to leave. They're the sisters. The sisters actually had their tables special, but they went to lunch at half past 11. They had their lunch at half past 11. So when they came back to the ward at 12 o'clock when the patients were served, they served the lunches. Miss Dove Grant again. She looks very young there. Oh, Mistress Grant. Ah, Miss Lucy does good of Grant. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, very tall and um, stately. Quite gentle voiced, actually. She was lovely, actually. She was um, fair, she was kind, but she was the matron. And you, you know, you knew she was the matron. <laughs>